ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركهم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We seek his guidance and his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the whispering of our desires whom Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whom He allows to be misled, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone having no partners, and that Muhammad wasallam is His slave and His messenger and His perfect worshiper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah as He deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. And Allah says, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and produced from that soul its mate and made from their combination many men and women, so fear your Lord whom you ask each other by. And by the ties of kinship, verily Allah is ever watchful over you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct, He will correct for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they are indeed victorious. Ask to proceed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an tells us beautiful stories and the best of stories. And this Qur'an is a source of incredible wisdom and guidance in every aspect of our lives. And today, in this brief khutbah, I just wanted to look at an aspect that is one that is incredibly crucial in our time and place, the society that we live in, a society that actually has the highest percentage of fatherlessness in the world is in the United States. And so I wanted to speak to the relationship specifically that a father has with his son, as presented to us in the Qur'an. What gems we can extract, what beauty we see. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll just be looking at four specific angles. And though the Qur'an also presents the relationship with fathers and daughters, Specifically in American society, there is a conflict that is presented between fathers and sons. And so we wanted to look and see how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala present that beautiful relationship from the people that we are introduced to in the Qur'an. And so the first is we see constant advice from the fathers to their children, to their sons. We see advice that is only interrupted by death. Whether it is the death of the father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, presenting one of the great fathers in the Quran, Ya'qub alayhi salam, Allah says, Am kuntum shuhada idh hadara Ya'qub al maut. Idh qala li banihi ma ta'buduna min ba'di, qalu na'budu ilahaka wa ilaha abayka Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq. Ilaha wahida wa nahnu lahum muslimun. And so Ya'qub alayhi salam on his deathbed, even though he has a son who is a prophet. And according to some of the Mufassirin, his other sons were prophets. It is something that is debated among the scholars of Tafsir. But if we were to assume that all of them were prophets, Ya'qub salam is still giving advice to his children even as he's dying. He's giving advice to his sons. So sometimes we might get older and we're like, why are my parents still giving me advice? I'm 20 years old, I'm 30 years old. We see Yaqub giving advice to his kids until he وسلم, passes away. Or it is not interrupted until the death of the child. Whether it is the death of the father or the death of the son. And so we see Nuh calling out to his son and he's saying, 
Ya Bunayya, come ma'ana wa la takum ma'al kafirin. He's saying to his son, Oh my son, get on the ark with us and do not be with those who are disbelievers. And the son, he says, Sa'awi, qala sa'awi ila jabalin ya'simuni min al ma' qala la asim al yawma min amrillah illa man rahim wa hala bainahum al mawju fa kana min al mughraqeen. Nuh alayhi salam is calling out to his son until the wave comes in between them. And he's engaging with his son. He's responding to his son. His son says, I'm going to climb a mountain. And Nuh alayhi salam is listening and he's still responding. Some of us, we talk over each other. But Nuh alayhi salam is repeating the exact words that his son is saying to indicate him being listening and responsive. Even in the last moments. We see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his uncle Abu Talib who was his father figure to him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the deathbed of Abu Talib is saying, Ya Am, qul la ilaha illallah, say la ilaha illallah. It is a statement by which I will argue on your behalf in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِهِ أَنَّهُ عَلَى مِلَّةِ عَبْدِ الْمُطَّلِبِ And his last words were that he was upon the millah of Ibrahim, of Abdul Muttalib, his father. But the idea here is the constant advice that the righteous fathers would give to their children until death. And of course, you have the great advice of Luqman, who gives advice to his son. And he says, لا تشرك بالله, O my son, my dear son, do not commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الشرك لظلم عظيم. And the passage continues until he says, يا بني أقم الصلاة أمر بالمعروف وانها عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور. He says, O oh my son, after commanding him to not commit shirk and after telling him that no matter what you do on this earth, no matter how small, Allah subhanahu wa taala will present it to you on the day of judgment. And that is a very, very, very powerful advice to give to your children, recognizing that you know what, I'm not going to be with you every step of the way. And so I am not raising my son to fear my presence, but I am raising my son to be aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've given this example many times, but there was a brother one time that I met in this masjid. And I've never seen him before and I've never seen him since. I've never seen this brother before or since. But he said something that subhanAllah I never forgot. He said, I tell my children, do you want to know when y'all will be Muslim? And his kids say, what do you mean? Of course, we're, we're already Muslim. And he says, no, you will be Muslim when you pray without me or your mom telling you to pray. That's when you'll be Muslim. Meaning, I'm raising my children to be aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not my presence. And he's saying to his son, even if it be an atom's weight of a sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. And then he says, Ya Bunay, aqim as salah Establish the prayer. Wa'mur bil ma'rufi wanhani munkar. And command good and forbid evil. The first step after belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to worship Allah. Worship Allah. And then the third step after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to call others to the worship of Allah and to be someone who is a source of change in the world, of positive influence in the world. Go out into this world and command good and forbid evil. But what else are you going to have to have after you go out into this world and you command good and forbid evil? Wasbir ala ma sabak. Endure the harm that's going to come your way. Not everybody's going to be happy with change. And not everybody is going to be happy with you trying to rectify oppression in this world and wrong in this world. Wasbir ala ma sabak. Have resilience. Inna dhalika min azm al umur. That is of the affairs of great commitment. You see the beautiful advice that Luqman alayhi salam is giving. And so we see the father gives advice to his son. Number two, the fathers of the Quran speak to their sons in endearing, gentle terms. You will find that Luqman alayhi salam calls his son, Ya Bunay, O oh my endearing son. You will find that Ibrahim alayhi salam calls him son, his son, Ya Bunay. You will find Ya'qub alayhi salam calling his son, Ya Bunay. You will find Nuh alayhi salam calling his son, Ya Bunay. O oh my dear son, even though these are people of different ethnicities, different cultures, different languages, different centuries, different regions, all of these fathers, these righteous fathers in the Qur'an, when they're speaking to their sons, they're speaking to them with endearing, beautiful terms. The only father in the Qur'an who speaks to his son by his first name is who? Ibrahim alayhi salam's father. He calls out to Ibrahim and he says, are you trying to dissuade me from my idols, Ibrahim? Even though we see in Surah Maryam that Ibrahim is calling out to his father with 
beautiful, endearing terms. Ya abati, la ta'budu shaytan. Inna shaytana kana rahman al-asir. He's calling him by his name, my dear father. But his father is not responding to Ibrahim alayhi salam with that beauty. And he simply calls him by his first name. It is something beautiful that a father call a son by something that is endearing. That there be some sort of nickname. That there be some sort of phrase. I was debating whether to share this, but if you'll indulge me on a, on a personal story. <coughs> In my culture, we don't say Habibi or anything like that. We don't, we don't do that stuff. And my father, Rahimahullah, he communicated love in many different ways, but like that type of Habibi phrase stuff, he didn't do that at all. But he did say it one time, and it became a very fond memory for me. We took, he was traveling overseas, and the culture is we all go to the airport, my family, but also a number of families, family, friends, and all of that, we all go see him off at the airport. That's just the way that we grew up doing it. And so there's maybe three or four or five families all watching him go through check-in. And we're all just a crowd at the airport. And then he calls me from amongst all the people. And I might have been like 21 or 22 years old. And he says, Ammar ta'ali habibi. He says, Ammar come, beloved. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this? My ears perked up, never heard it before. And then he calls me close and he says, where nobody else could hear, he says, I forgot my passport at home. He says, he says, go, go and get it. It's as if you never left. Doesn't want anybody to know. When I tell you that Habibi had me doing speeds on the highway, that no cop was going to catch me. No cop was going to catch me. But that's just a phrase. You don't know what a phrase like that means for a son coming from his father. And so it's beautiful that you see Ya Bunay again and again and again in the Qur'an, endearing terms. Number three, the fathers of the Qur'an do not belittle the intelligence of their children. They don't belittle the intelligence of their sons. You know Ya'qub salam, his son is presented with a dream. And his son comes to him and he says, tells the dream. And his father says, Ya Bunay, la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatik. He says, don't tell your dream to your brothers. How many fathers, young boy, would have just stopped there? Don't tell him the dream. That's it. Why? Because I said so. You're not going to understand. Don't tell him the dream. But what does Yaqub do? He spends the next two verses explaining to this little boy what would happen. He, he continues to explain to him that if you do so, your brothers will plot against you. And he explains to him that that's not because of the evil of your brothers, but because of the evil of shaitan and that he's an enemy. And you might think to yourself, what does a little boy need to know about all of these things? But he's not belittling the intelligence of this boy. He recognizes that Yusuf can understand these concepts. And you see, not only him, but you see Ibrahim قال يا ابو ليا اني ارى في المنام اني اذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا ابي تفعل ما تؤمر ستجدني ان شاء الله من الصابرين even when it comes to Ibrahim's dream he tells and he communicates to his boy who's very young he simply got to the point where now he's able to walk with him and, and, and work with him 9 10 11 years old maybe and he says i saw a dream as well what do you see and he said my father do what you've been commanded to do you will find me insha Allah ta'ala to be of those who are patient but that idea of conversing with your sons, including them in discussions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Ibn Abbas, he says, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat, ihfadhi Allah, ihfadhak. He's describing to Ibn Abbas, who is nine or ten years old, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling him that beautiful hadith that's in a tirmidhi that we've talked a lot about over the past two months. But he says to him, know that if an entire world were to gather to harm you, they wouldn't be able to harm you with anything more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you. And you might think to yourself, yeah, the Prophet sallallahu a nine-year-old boy, what does a nine-year-old boy have to know about the entire world showing enmity to them? It's only nine years old, eight years old. This is too big of a conversation for a kid. But yet we see these fatherly figures not belittling the intelligence of their children. And the last thing that I'll mention, the fourth, is participation in worship together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ 
Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail together, father and son, are raising the pillars of the Kaaba together. And they are both saying to Allah, Oh Allah, accept from us. You are the one who accepts. You are the all-knowing. Worshipping together, traveling together, doing Umrah together, Salah in congregation together in the family, in the house. This is all very, very important. This is all very crucial to build the relationship between the father and son. It is a beautiful thing when fathers and sons spend time together. And it is even more beautiful when that time that is spent is in the worship of Allah. أقول ما سمعتم مستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه سلم سليم الكثيرة. We ask Allah عز وجل to allow us to hear the speech and follow the best of it. اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل. اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها مولاها. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل طأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين رب ارحمهما كما ربان صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربان صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربان صغيرا اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحمك باهلنا في فلسطين اللهم احقن دماءهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وقوم الى صلاته رحمه الله